Today, I'm going to take you through the capability maturity model. This is a way to roll out, to adopt natural language, conversational AI in your enterprise. It goes from a level zero to a level four. And I'm going to walk through each of these with you. The first level is level zero. Now, this is actually the most important level. What level zero is, is cultural adoption of natural language in the enterprise. And what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is in any organization, when you want to have people start using tools in a different way, a way that uh, is unfamiliar or new to them, uh, you have to get them comfortable with it. Using natural language to interact with systems is no different. When we use natural language and we want it to create something for us, generative AI, or we want it to analyze something for us, we have to be comfortable with these tools. And the way it all starts is using what I call public tools. Public tools are tools like ChatGPT, Claude, Copilot, Gemini. And these public tools allow that knowledge worker to do certain things that they couldn't do before. And the reason this is a cultural change is because for some people, it might feel like cheating. It might feel like they're using tools that maybe they shouldn't use because maybe what once took five hours now takes five minutes. And what you have to do when you're rolling out, implementing, adopting natural language in your, in your organization is to make it known that it's okay to use these tools. And it all starts with getting really good at public tools. And I'll have another, another video to show you hands-on how that works. The easiest way to have this adoption and to show that it's supported is by getting everyone involved. Have your team show you how they're using ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini. In our organization, when we were first introducing this as something as a part of our organization, essentially becoming an AI first organization, uh, there were some people that were apprehensive. We're a digital marketing company. We have writers, editors, content specialists, creative people that, uh, that do really great creative things. And some of them were concerned. Were these tools going to hurt their job? Or are these tools going to take their place? Well, what we determined is in our organization, everything we do is human enabled. Human guides things. The human is the one who makes and helps the AI do what it's doing. So in our situation, our human direction using these tools was something that we really wanted to have everybody in the company embrace. And when we did this initially, we had a contest and we had some people submit ways that AI could help the company or help improve their job. And we gave away a prize and it was, it was nice, but the most important thing was not the contest itself. What it was was showing that we are an AI first organization and we expect these tools to be used, but also it's okay to use them and they're not going to impact your job. They're going to make your job hopefully easier and better. And that's what we call level zero. It's the cultural adoption using public AI tools. When we talk about level one, we're talking about having a natural language interaction with documents. Think PDF files, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets. This natural language interaction with documents is the easiest first step because there's probably quite a bit of documentation for some aspect of your business. And when we start this, we we do this with a process called content engineering. The content engineer, when preparing documents for a conversational AI, for a knowledge base, goes through three steps. The first step they follow is that content engineer is eliminating contradictions, contradictions in the data. An example of a contradiction is maybe you upload 50 past proposals. And in each one of these proposals, it says a different number of total clients. That inconsistency is in and of itself a contradiction. If you gave all of those documents to a person and asked them, how many clients do we have? The person either would not know or they'd make something up. Same is true for AI. If you feed AI contradictions, either it'll say it don't, won't know or it may hallucinate and make something up. So that's the very first step eliminating contradictions in your documents. The second step is eliminating redundancies. Using the proposal analogy again, 
you upload 50 proposals and maybe they all start with the same boilerplate paragraph. Well, overtraining a little bit is not a big deal, but if you continually feed the model duplicate content, over time, it's going to overtrain the model. And what's going to happen is the output will bias towards that overtraining. So the second item is eliminating these redundancies. And the third item, well, that's, that's filling in gaps. In any knowledge base, there are going to be things that are missing. And so the way you approach this is you start with a list of questions that you think your users, your customers, anyone that's using this knowledge base will ask. And based on those questions, they then go to a public model like ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini, upload the questions and ask it to create more questions that are similar. Now you have a lot more questions. Go through each of these questions and look at where the source document would be. And once you come across a question where you don't know where you could find that information, well, that's missing content. And that content has to be written so that it can be then published to the knowledge base. So when you do a conversational AI in a level one and you are introducing documents into a knowledge base so somebody can interact with that natural language, make sure you embrace content engineering as your first step. The second part of the capability maturity model is what we call level two. This is having a natural language interaction with your systems. So we all have different systems. We have CRM systems, we have ERP systems, marketing automation systems, proprietary systems, systems specific to a certain industry or vertical. And many of these systems, if they're commercial, have an API or an application programming interface. And for most companies, that API is used to pull data into a dashboard, or that API is used to connect one system to another. But what we can also do is have a natural language bridge, a natural language interface, whereby someone can ask a question in natural language, it connects to the API, gets the data back, sends it to the natural language interface, and then that summarizes it. An example would be a project management system. So we use a project management system called Asana, and Asana has an API. And we can interact with it, we can integrate with it, we can put reports on it. Well, say, for example, you want to ask Asana, what are all of the overdue projects we have right now? Or for this specific project, how many overdue tasks do we have? Well, the way you would normally do that is you ask the project manager. Project manager goes to Asana, either goes to that project or runs a report, comes up with the answer, and then replies back. With a natural language bridge, what we're doing is we're going into our system of choice that we use for internal communications. Uh, for example, that could be Teams or Slack, one of those systems. And then we call out Asana. At Asana, how many tasks are overdue for this project? That natural language bridge accepts the, the inquiry. It then connects it to the API. And then that API does the call, pulls the data back, summarizes it, and then you get the answer. And you take the person out of the middle of that so that somebody doesn't have to go log in and summarize all these things. That's an example of a level two project. Now, level three projects, they're called level three, not because of amount of work or complexity associated with the AI piece. They're actually called level three simply because the amount of work it, it takes to get these pieces in place. And that's natural language interface to a data warehouse or a data lake. So whether you have a Kimball data warehouse or a Medallion data lake, you have some large repository that connects data from many different systems together. If you have something like that, or a proprietary system with a SQL backend, you create a natural language bridge by interfacing natural language using your system of choice, Slack, Teams, or maybe just a custom chat interface. And then when you do an inquiry, it's going to the bridge that maps the data in the different tables or the data in the different structures to that meaning in this bridge. And what, what gets created is the intermediary layer creates SQL, SQL, or if it's doing something that a data scientist might, might do, it creates Python code. And then it interrogates the data warehouse, summarizes the answers and brings it back. And we consider that a level three. 
type project. And in an organization that's evolving using natural language, using conversational AI, you're going to have different types of projects, one, two, and three, all starting with building a culture where everybody's comfortable interacting with systems this way. And that's when you get to level four. That is AI-driven transformation, where your organization at its core is using AI tools. It's also the point where you may put in policy so that you no longer allow public tools to be used. Everything that got you to level zero and got you to acceptance using public tools, you might may now make policy that all interactions associated with doing one's job uses the proprietary tools or the custom tools or the tools delivered by their so your software vendors. And then that is where you get your answers, talking to documents, talking to systems, or talking to a backend data repository. And that's our level four. And all these come together, and your starting point ends up being cultural adoption. Hope this is helpful. See you in the next video.